Hello, welcome back to Matt here. In today's video, we're looking at Nikon SLR cameras. And in particular, if you want a affordable alternative to the Nikon F100, stay tuned. So for any of you that saw my Nikon F5 video, I can link it below. Some of the comments that came from the back of that video from you guys is, why don't you try out the Nikon F100? It's also an autofocus, high-end camera, high-end kind of Nikon level camera, but a kind of fraction of the weight of the Nikon F5 and kind of a lot of the functionality. So I got the Nikon F100, but then shortly after I discovered another camera, which seems almost too good to be true in terms of the price. So today we're not looking at the Nikon F100, but I'll probably do this in a later video. We are looking at the seemingly less fashionable and therefore much more affordable Nikon F80. In the US, this is called the Nikon N80. So there's a quick side by side in this, here's the Nikon F100, here's the Nikon F80. As you can hopefully see, the F80 is slightly smaller. And so is the price tag. So the rest of this video will cover the Nikon F80 or N80 and why I think it's the sweet spot between some of the high-end autofocus cameras such as the Nikon F6, Nikon F5, Nikon F100, which is very popular autofocus cameras, but then also swap hands. If you saw my recent video, I also reviewed the Nikon FG20. Now this is manual focus camera, so manual focus lenses. If you like the idea of this camera, again, I'll link the video to this below, but you say rely on autofocus lenses or you use, say G lenses. Say for example, you're a Nikon digital shooter and you use Nikon G lenses, such as this 51.8G. There's potentially no point you buying this camera because you cannot use your G lenses on this camera. But perhaps you like the idea of how small and lightweight it is. That's where the Nikon F80 comes in. It's the kind of, in my mind, the autofocus equivalent to the FG camera, in that it's light, affordable, reasonably small, and offers a whole lot of value. So let's look at a few comparisons between the Nikon F80 versus the Nikon F100, and then the Nikon F80 versus the Nikon FG20. So first of all, a bit of background, this is classed as a high-end Nikon SLR camera, meaning it's not quite the professional line, which is the, say, F6, F5, but it's above cameras like the FM, FM2, FE, FE2, FM3A, which again, I've already reviewed, and I can link that video below as well. So it is designed to be a high-ish end camera compared to the FG, which is a entry-level camera near the bottom. This is actually what I call a modern film camera. And some of you, perhaps younger viewers, you may think, but this is a vintage camera. It was made like ages ago in the year 2000. For me, this is a modern film camera because I'm used to using 1950s film cameras, such as my Barnett Leicas, Leica M3, cameras like that. So this is probably as new as it gets for me in terms of film cameras. And if you're used to using a DSLR or Nikon, it's kind of such an easy transition from say a Nikon D800, which I've got for when I used to shoot Nikon, through to the Nikon F80. I won't go through every dial and button on it, but you can see from first glance, apart from the, the lack of LCD on the back, it is very similar to kind of the modern Nikon digital cameras. You've got the roll dial on the front, the roll dial on the back, the built-in diopter, your usual uh, manual setting, Aperture priority, shutter priority, program mode. It is literally a modern enough film camera as you can get. So that may suit perhaps younger viewers that want a easy transition or and or use autofocus modern lenses. I guess talking of lenses, one difference between the F80 and the F100. The F80 works fully with the G lenses, Nikkor G lenses, Nikkor D lenses but it won't meter correctly with the AI lenses, such as the AI, AIS lenses, such as the one shown on the Nikkor FG20 here. So bear that in mind, if you, if you enjoy using manual focus lenses, you may be better off with a manual focus body, such as either the, the entry level FG type cameras or mid level uh, FM, FM2, FE, FE2, those type of cameras. They are really nice cameras, but this is more for people that enjoy autofocus. And then in contrast, the F100 can be used with all the lenses, pretty much so AI, AIS, D lenses, G lenses, it kind of, it does it all. So one, I guess, one benefit for the F100. 
in terms of build the f100 is a heavier camera without batteries it's 785 grams with batteries 879 grams 515 grams with batteries 613 grams and are you ready 440 grams with batteries so the fg20 is half the weight of the f100 with batteries and it's 50 times lighter than the f80 That's why I love this camera, regardless of the fact that it's got the budget level, entry level badge on it. It really doesn't matter to me. So if I quickly race through some of the benefits or features of the F80 autofocus lenses, it offers multiple exposure or double exposure on the top. You've got self timer, you've got built in diopter, uh, built in LCD for those of you that like that. As I say, you've got all the kind of settings you'd find on a modern DSLR camera. It's potentially one of the lightest of the Nikon autofocus film cameras ever made. Don't quote me on that. And if there's a lighter one, let me know in the description below. But as far as I know, it is one of the lightest, if not the lightest. That's why I've got it. I like my light cameras. It might be viewed as kind of an amateur accessory, but the Nikon F80 has pop-up flash. <laughs> you could laugh at this and see this as a even lower level camera thing, you may have already thought of it as such, but equally it actually can be quite useful. But if you enjoy that kind of retro look, pop-up flash type photos, you can actually use this and get some kind of half decent results. I did play with it a little bit when I was in Poland and I can show an example photo here. So this was pop-up flash plus available light. I can't open the back of the camera to show you, but it looks the same as every other Nikon SLR camera inside. See one of my other videos if you want to see how to load film into the F80. It does have the modern style kind of film preview window. So I can see I've got some Ilford Pan 400 film loaded. And then in terms of batteries, maybe one downside, it takes two CR13A batteries that go in here. Again, I won't take it out because I've got a film loaded. Why is that a downside? It's a downside because they're potentially less easy to find in your kind of local grocery store, for example, or, or petrol station. They're also more expensive than AA batteries. The Nikon F100, in contrast, takes four AA batteries, which are easily available, but obviously four more batteries, that's adding to the weight. The F100 is perhaps more similar to my Nikon F4, which also takes four AA batteries whereas the Nikon F5 takes eight AA batteries. And then if you prefer cameras that don't require batteries, look at the cameras like the FM, FM2, FM3A, where all those cameras are fully manual, or even cameras such as the FG20, FE, FE2, which use small kind of coin size watch batteries, the LR44s. Those tend to go forever and don't add additional weight to your camera. I guess additional benefits if you are new to film photography, being a modern camera, you have autofocus, as we've mentioned. You also have auto film advance, also film rewind. So it pretty much does everything. You put your film in, start. Once the film's finished, film out. Personally, I would say this is a negative because I prefer to manually advance my film and manually rewind my film because then I can get more shots out of every 36 roll of film. You can normally get 38, 39 if you kind of load it manually and kind of do it carefully. And then when I rewind my film, I leave the leader out because I prefer that when I develop my own film. With a camera like this, it's going to rewind the film back into the can completely, making it a bit more of a faff when it comes to film developing if you develop your own film. If you don't, you can ignore that point. And just to quickly throw a few more numbers at you, this is where I need three hands, balance one on my head. I'll have to hold two. So we have the F100 at kind of one end of the spectrum in this scenario, kind of the, the best of the bunch, you would say and the most expensive, but equally still cheaper than many other cameras. The F100 has a maximum shutter speed of 1 over 8,000. The F80 has a maximum shutter speed of 1 over 4,000. The FG20 has a maximum shutter speed of 1 over 1,000. Next, if you're a strobist and you use your speed lights, maximum flash sync speed of the F100, 1 over 250. F80 is 1 over 125. FG20, 1 over 90. And I guess one more easy to compare feature, viewfinder coverage of the Nikon F100 is 96%. That's not quite the level of the F5, which is 100%, meaning when you look to the viewfinder, you're not seeing quite the, the edge of the photo. 96% F100, 92% on the F80, 92% on the FG20. So let's look at cost and then I'll round up and say which camera may be best for you. Okay, price. This is where it gets exciting. Potentially. I checked on eBay as at January 2021. An average price of a Nikon F100 without kind of sticky back, they often get the sticky rubber backs, seems to be at £200. You can get them slightly cheaper and you might get a good deal, but you can also pay kind of 
250 slightly more average price 200 Nikon F80 are you ready the reason why I'm excited to share it with you 50 pounds average price you can get it cheaper and you could pay slightly more I paid 50 pounds with a lens maybe two lenses I can't remember at least one lens and camera I think for it was really cheap I think it was less than 50 pounds with lens so it's just like what the heck that's a really good deal for pretty much a brand new kind of modern film camera that's ready to go you don't have all the problems you get with a 1950s camera where they're really old so they may need repairs and things like that because it's such a new camera in film terms you can get a really good deal and they're just good to go straight away also with these cameras being targeted at kind of more amateur i guess consumer level often they've had very little use i guess the tip would be look for bundle offers where somebody is selling their entire camera bag with the camera a lens and i don't know maybe a flash and you do get really good value because they're just selling the whole kit because they don't use it and as i say those types of cameras often have had very little use 50 pounds and the Nikon FG20 check out that video if you've not already seen it also 50 pounds so which is the best camera that is the question now I'm going to try and go at this from the angle of a person that's probably likely to buy this camera if you're a photography student if you're new to film photography coming from Nikon digital cameras if you enjoy autofocus lenses or if you just want as many of the kind of modern features as possible for the lowest price I would pick of these three cameras the Nikon F80 as the best kind of sweet spot between the Nikon F100 type cameras and then the manual cameras such as the the Nikon FG in this example FG20 or even the the cameras we've looked at before the FM FE2 FM2 blah 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 all those those cameras this camera for me offers the best bang for buck for all the people that I just mentioned but there is a but if you're perhaps more advanced with your photography and you want something weather sealed and kind of a bit more solid and you shoot a lot of film and you use a mix of AIS lenses, older lenses and autofocus lenses, you may definitely want to check out the Nikon F100. If you want a review on this camera, let me know in the comments below and I'll put something together for you. So for more advanced people, the F100 is a really good alternative to kind of the kind of closer to pro level Nikon film camera type shooters if however you love your vintage cameras and your vintage lenses and especially manual focus lenses this is my personal choice of these three cameras i much prefer manual focus lenses and the kind of the slower process of older cameras i guess um, i did use the nikon f80 with the nikkor 50 1.8 g lens as seen here when i was in poland and i did shoot a reasonable amount of film maybe six rolls of film with it And it was fine but it was a bit too automated i didn't like the auto film advance i didn't like the auto film rewind and i didn't like the fact that i couldn't use my small autofocus ai ais lenses on the camera and i didn't like the fact that i'm relying on batteries and the batteries could die at any time so for me the nikon fg20 is still my favorite and if i wanted more features then i'd probably go for something like the nikon fm2n which is in my previous video very similar to this but a lot more features and a much more solid build if i want a lightweight slr option i would take the fg20 if i want a camera which may need to last me three months out in the field on a, a road trip i'd probably take a nikon fm2n for anybody that cares and for anybody interested in terms of lenses i'll probably take this nikkor 50mm 1.8 pancake japanese version which focuses down to 0.45 meters. Feel free to subscribe if you want to see some Nikkor mount lens reviews later this year. So that's it. I think I've covered everything I wanted to say. The Nikon F80 really does offer great value for anybody looking for an autofocus, easy to use, 
as modern as possible film camera. But I guess for me personally, I'm a sucker for the vintage cameras. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and it helps the video get seen by other people and hopefully other photography students that are trying to shoot some film on a budget may benefit from knowing about the Nikon F80, Nikon N80. Feel free to subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. If you are a Nikon F80 user, let me know in the comments. It doesn't seem that popular a camera, so it'd be interesting to know if any of you guys already do shoot this camera. And finally, a big thanks to my patrons. If you find you've already watched all my YouTube videos and you want more content to watch, perhaps head over to my Patreon. There's probably 150-ish unseen posts on there, which will keep you going if you want more content to kind of digest. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you back here tomorrow. Bye.